Real 92.3, Bootleg Kev, DJ has West Coast. Yes. Vic Mensa is here. What's, What's up, up my guy? My How guy? you feeling, man? Yo, man. The motherfucking guy is here. Yo, tell us first of all, I don't think I've ever seen you in this jewelry, man. Oh yeah, this a um this like real, real fucking real rapper like now, now it's the coming to America it's collection. Little, it's a little different. This this the village boy chain is what I call it, man. It's um I took a lot of pieces uh of like metal work from where my father's from, Ghana. So this oh, these are I was gonna say that looks this, like a one of one. This is Ashanti shit, yeah. So I had all these um you know, I had all these brass beads cast in gold and mixed them in with like the colorful glass joints and did the fucking Fertility head and shit, you know. You know, someone's gonna six months from now we're gonna see like seven rappers with the same. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have first. something else. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you got the new record out with uh with G Easy, the Reverse Joint. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's dope. Um, you know, the album came out last year. I thought yes, it was sir. extremely slept on. Where are you at right now? I know you're working, man. You're always working. I know you're probably sitting on a lot of music. What's next? For sure. Yeah, we got a lot of different energies that we're working on. You know, just uh. Uh, one place I've been is um, like kind of like an Afro beat, Afro beat space. I always wanted to step into African music, and so I've been doing like some dance hall Afro beat type shit. Also, like you know, I'm always rock and roll and influence and inspire. So you know, kind of like marrying that energy from the punk records that I love with uh, you know, like trap bounces. Have you ever I, considered doing like a full fledged rock record? Because I feel like you got the the chords for record. it. People people tell me that I never really thought about it. But you know the thing is, honestly, I don't really think of music um, in such a genre in such a genre. Because then you put everything in a box. Limitation yeah. where just me, I I have trouble even seeing it that way because my musical knowledge, my rolodex is just like very deep. Like I'll be in the car, you know, and I'll be listening to some obscure hardcore punk shit leftover crack and then i'll be listening to some 70s nancy wilson and i'll be listening to bone thugs and harmony like in the same drive so it's an extremely so eclectic it's just like music doesn't you know it, do, it doesn't it has no boundaries or, or labels it's just like when i start to make a song i don't i don't think about you you know what kind of song it has to be it's more like what what do i feel that makes sense when you when you and i'm glad you talked about the the the, the music and the real crazy assortment because I went to you I went to one of your shows it was my first Vic Mensa experience and it was epic like the oh, thank you. right it was like the I and I had never been to one of your shows before I didn't know the homies tried to tell me but I didn't word up, word I didn't up. really I didn't really know now how do you do you do the lights and everything yourself cuz that's I noticed that was a big part of your show too like is that something that you mm, take serious when, when the show was cuz I um I've had a couple well, really it was out here. One. It was like last. It was about eight months ago. It was out here at like the Echo Plex or something. I wonder like who that. was doing those lights. Was it Will? It was probably my boy Will Hasty. Man, it's uh. It just seemed like the music was in sync with the with the lights. Yeah, with yeah, the... because it was like you know I I kind of like um I try to I try to forge relationships with people and um and have those people be really immersed in the experience so that you know the guy that was doing the lights for that show was probably my boy will hasty who also does production design for my sets and also you know helps me with music videos and is just my friend so it's like he'll be around while i'm making the music and while i'm coming up with the vision so he kind of has a you know a, a really um intertwined uh, energy with with what I'm doing so that the whole thing is an experience you know I want every part of what I do from the clothes I wear if I'm gonna wear some jewelry to the jewelry I wear to the music videos I make to the interviews I give you know to an essay I write I want all that shit to be completely representative of me in the right way consistent with the yeah and so that's why you know at, at times I, it'll be like you know, you know, I'll take time between things I do because I don't want to just do some shit because of the insatiable appetite of the market. And I don't know <laughs> if that can be to my detriment at times, for sure, but I just really, really care about all output, you know, so I want everything to be, you know, up to my standards. That makes sense. Um, the album, man, you know, we were been waiting for the, the debut Vic Mensa album for so long, and I, I think it, it didn't disappoint, but I do feel like it kind of was a little slept on as far as like you know commercial success do you feel like commercially it might have flopped a little because you know no, i don't feel like it flopped at all i feel like i changed people's lives with that album no it you was know? a great body of work man. like people 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 tell me this album this album you know saved me from killing myself you know Damn. and it's like 
those are the things that really matter to me. Um, I had a line in some I said the other day where I was like, um, I was like, uh, now I'm in a panic scrambling for relevance from a bunch of people I consider irrelevant. You know, I'm not an internet person. I didn't create my persona online you, behind yeah. the keyboard like I'm a real person. You You're know not what a I'm fucking saying? meme. <laughs> I'm not a meme. And, you know, I really do this shit. And, you know, what's most important to me is to impact the world in, um, you know, to impact the world in a, in a significant way, to impact the people's lives in a significant way so i would rather i would rather be a motherfucker that six months from now they're gonna bite this style i had the same way a lot of niggas bit styles i had in the past Big time. you know then you know just be a nigga i had a line when i was a kid i had a line when i was a kid on one of my first shits i said wrinkle in time twinkle and shine a star uh disney in 99 brink on the grind cold wine when i drink and i dine I would rather drop a classic than make a fucking single and sign. I said something like that. Mm -hmm. that's, still, that's still the way I feel. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I know that as uh, as time passes, you know, that the history books will show what I've done. And, uh, you know, my legacy will reflect what I do. How you feel about the current state of the music right now? Like like where it is, like about the singles and about the, the, the instant gratification? I feel like it's cool for whoever, you know, we just, had, we just had this argument game. about Drake, and I was like, "Yo, Drake ain't in the top ten. And you're like, "Yo, but he's but like, I still feel like Drake I was, ain't dropped the I classic was talking album. About accolades, like just based on the ten year run, like it, it would I have to be. Like, it would have like, to be a conversation. I feel like Drake's a single artist. Like I feel like Drake when he drops albums, like they're always like decent. You know what I mean? You know, the album was definitely just regular. But I feel like the it's albums every Drake are definitely album. just regular. But I'm just saying that, that was our we we had a whole it was a whole thing, but whatever. If you can't put out a classic <laughs> album, I can't take you serious as a rapper is all I'm saying. But that's Damn, that's the barometer? You gotta be able to put out a body of work. A whole classic. Bruh, if you got God eight, damn. if you got eight albums the, that's the bar? and not one of them is a classic. That's the bar? You gotta have all you fuck to be in the top ten? All right. How do you feel about this, Vic Mensa? <laughs> I'm sorry, we sat full Drake's before classic. you came. We had a whole thing. I think Drake got it close to a classic, but take care. But outside of that, uh, I think so far gone is a classic to me. The tape, yeah, it's a mixtape. So it's what do you? Tape, so are you talking about impact? Or are you it's also like an album too, though. You yeah. know, it's like man, what the fuck does album mean? Niggas is That's putting true. out albums that just because the the game has changed a little bit they're actually mixtapes it's like they're just albums it's now. second installment is project baby yep, two yep, or yep, some yep. shit right right it's an album, right you know what i mean so it's like i think that so far gone should be considered an album too and that should be considered if that's a classic. considered an album then i would i would say that that is a classic but For i do sure. feel like he was rapping over other people's beats on that so yeah. but nonetheless a couple um of them. Talk about uh, how did you feel about the uh, the Pusha T Drake beef? I mean, as a rap fan, where, where, where do you where you know did you enjoy that? Um, for the sport, yeah, hell yeah, that, that was cool. You know what I'm saying? I uh, obviously you know Pusha's my man. Um, I'm the asshole wearing a clip shirt talking shit about Drake in this interview. Too, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pusha's my man. Um, I, I, I rock with it. I thought it was like, ooh, when he when he did the whole child thing. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the more I thought about it, the more I was like, you know, at first it just looked really bad. And I thought about it, and I'm like, you know what? Honestly, does Drake, just because he's in a public sphere, have, you know, the responsibility to... To reveal his to, kid. To reveal his business to the world. It looked like he was hiding a child because it was presented that way. But, you know, shit... It's none of your fucking business. Yeah, I mean, it's like he doesn't really have to put it out to the world. I, I do think Pusha won, for sure. Facts. I feel what you're saying, though. I feel like, I feel like you know, the perception of that disc record was like, dang. But, like, once you really sit back and look at the whole situation. It was it was some spice in there, though. It was a it lot was of spice. Somebody, ask somebody who hip-hop fans respect. What are the, what's, the, what's the line? Like, is there a line? Like, if somebody want to get into it with Vic, is there a line that you, do you not say your wife's name, you not say your child's name? Like, what's the what's the rules? Are there rules at this point? I, I don't think there was ever rules. It's just like, whatever you, whatever, I, t I tell people this, you know, everything you say and do can have a consequence. So it's like, the line is when you take some shit past what's just going to be wrapped back at you. You know what I'm saying? So, right. But it's like, ain't no line. Shit, it's a blood sport. It's like, ain't no line. It's just, if you go to a certain extent, then that shit could become something other than music. You just know? be prepared for whatever. Yeah. yeah. I I'm curious, speaking of uh, the lines, um, you know, Takashi got into it with Chief Keef. Did you, as a Chicago 
native, did you take that as disrespect towards Chicago at For sure. all? 100%. How did you feel about that? Because I felt like he kind of was like trolling the whole was, city a bit. That shit was goofy, though. Like, yeah. that shit was lame. Niggas got their style from Chicago, you feel me? So, um, 100% in his case. I mean, there's, like, actual videos. And it's a shame, too, because I actually, I like Takashi music, you feel me? But when I saw him pretending to be uh, riding around Chicago like he was just on business, yeah. like, on the block in the middle of the night, you know what I mean, the night before, Talking about where y'all at, where yeah. y'all at, I'm on y'all block. I'm in Chicago, I'm handing out shit because these Chicago rappers don't want to do nothing. It's like, yo, look up the fucking facts. The receipts exist online. There's whole Vine videos of every line that Takashi 69 bit from Chicago rappers. All really? His oh, line, 100%. His he's lines ha- about, he's get so the fuck heavily, up out my fucking face before I murder you. Is a, by the drill that's, movement. A, that's an exact Rondo bar. He got exact Young Pappy bars that he bit. He got exact bars, like 10 of them that he said verbatim from Chicago rappers. So to come to Chicago disrespecting the whole city like that because he got a beef with one person from the city, I felt that that was very goofy. You know what I'm saying? But it's also, once again, Dave Chappelle said this shit, we in the age of spin. You know what I'm saying? This is not... It's the game ain't the same. It's like people people get on for all types of just weird shit. Goofy reasons. And people respect a lot of different things than I do. You know what's interesting, what I always liked about you is that you always, even though something was probably never directly directed towards you, you always were very vocal about the defense of Chicago. Like, I respect that, because that's how I feel about L.A. So I think, like, for you, do you watch The Shy? Yeah, I fuck with The Shy, fuck, Do you fuck I'm, with I'm it? I'm not fully caught up. I, I haven't really gotten into the second season yet, but I definitely wa- rock with The Shy. So is, is it a, a, is I feel like it's, it's it, I feel like that's the most authentic depiction that I've seen of Chicago, because I, I got family from Chicago. Yeah, The Shy is very strong. Okay, bet. Very strong. What about the Chirac movie? That shit, no. <laughs> very weak. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't nah. even see that, that shit. Just because everybody sp- I know from Chicago was just shitting on it on social I media. Look like, at Spike Lee saying that wasn't man. the play. That's bro. crazy. Yeah, I was actually in the Chirac movie. I tried to get out, and Spike Lee like, like cussed me out, and my lawyers were like, you know, we can't. You know, really going to litigation with Amazon, nigga. You just got to deal Lee. with it. So, so, <laughs> right? so, like, we don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that smoke. That like, bag is big, that, bro. That, that Bezos bag. <laughs> it was like they don't want that smoke. So, you know, so. So, so, I so, just so ended up in a movie. I just, I just told him, don't credit me. You a know? phone conversation that Spike Lee cusses you out over, or is Spike this in Lee person? Is just phony as fuck, bro. Like Spike Lee, honestly, he a bitch ass nigga. Like, and it's fucked up because I really. I love Spike Lee's art. You of course, know, when do I was, the right thing. When I was about 18 years old, I went over there to, um, Spike Lee was doing a book signing um, on, like, Roosevelt Halstead in Chicago. And um, I went and I got my, like, laptop signed, the laptop I used to make all my first beats on. Damn. And, um, and then come to find out, I had the box set, you know, come to find out he's a full bitch-ass nigga, full-fledged, but it really hurt my feelings, you know? Damn. And he's just very arrogant to where... Spike Lee really felt like because he's Spike Lee that he could come into Chicago, you know, and just paint the picture the way he wants to without really having the people that that he should be checking in with involved because everybody was kind of like, uh, you know, so when I signed on to do it, Kanye was involved, Common was involved, uh, ooh, ooh, you know what I'm saying? And then these people just kind of like backed start, off. start backing off and... I'm on the road, I'm, I'm this and that, you feel me? And Spike Lee, I'm still thinking like, man, you know, the movie's going to happen. I want it to depict, to depict my city in the best way possible. And so Spike is telling me, yeah, you could come in and we could go through the script and we can get all the slang right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get, get all of that shit right and, you know, have creative input. And he basically, he just finessed me, used me for my plugs. He needed a studio to record at, so I sent him to my man, LPZ. He needed a producer to, like, put the shit together, so I linked him up with Young Chop. And then he kind of just stopped picking up the phone until it was the day to shoot. So I show up on shooting day, um, and it's goofy as hell. You know, they got, like, these flags, supposed to be gangbangers, but they have, like, it's inspired by a Greek tragedy, so they have, like, the Trojans and the Spartans are the gangs. Nick Cannon is the gang leader. There's a, like, one gang is waving around 
purple flags. One gang is raving around orange flags, and I'm talking about like big, Nick Cannon as a gang leader, not very believable. Just, just medieval <laughs> times. For the record. He said medieval times. Medieval times flags. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And um, <clears throat> and so I'm there for that day, and I'm like, wow, this shit is like as bad as it gets. This is horrible. I'm I'm gonna just slip out the back door. You know what I'm saying? And not sign the paperwork so right. I can try to get out of this shit. And you know. When I called Spike and told him, man, you know, I can't be a part of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Because you just ain't really representing this shit, right? He's like, man, fuck you. Y'all Chicago niggas. Are you serious? Y'all Chicago niggas. I'm going to show y'all Chicago niggas. You come and all y'all. Fuck y'all. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. I was like, man, you're a little ass. I'll slap the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> that just is you, crazy. Just because you a legend and a fucking OG does not mean I won't smack fire off, smack that fitted cap off your head, man. Fuck Are Spike you Lee. serious? On gang them, fuck Spike Lee. Damn. That's crazy. What? Damn, I had no idea, bro. It's lit. That's the first time I've ever heard that's like anything about that. Fuck Spike Lee. Uh, King Louie got a song called Fuck Spike Lee. Shout out to King Louie. Um, yo, uh, Kanye just had a crazy run. Like, good music just, just did, you know, was it five projects? Shit, five. Yeah. Tiana. You count Tiana? It's not yeah, official, of course. but... But, um, <laughs> you know, Kanye is always somebody who, who who's co-signed you and... um. um you know, you you got two of the biggest cosigns in the game between Hove and Ye, but but what's your relationship currently with Kanye? Because I feel like I haven't seen y'all work together for a long time. Last time I saw Kanye was at the March for Our Lives. Um, and that was before all the crazy Trump shit had transpired. Before the, Trump, before the Trumpism, Trumpism, what do they call that? Which a, a quite, um, you know, for him to go to that march and then a few weeks <laughs> later cosign Trump is kind of... Yeah, yeah, um, you know... I can't speak too much on it because I haven't spoken to him since then. Yeah. So all I, you know, all I can really make judgments from is what I've seen in the media, and you know, I don't really, I really don't want to make those judgments. Yeah. Cause yeah. Hey, speaking of that, I want um just a quick quick question for you because you seem like very very authentic in your thought process. Uh, what you just said about the Spike Lee thing, and then you said you can't speak on the Kanye shit. Do you, do you, I have a, I have a perspective that I don't want to meet any more of my heroes just because I'm always let down. Do you, is that something that you feel is the same sentiment? Like as far as like people that you look up to, OGs that you came up listening to or working, wanting to work with? Nah, you know, I don't feel that way. I, um, I want to meet Andre 3000. That's, Yo, that's where I'm at. I was at, at Complex it. Con and Andre walked by me and I had the perfect opportunity. You didn't say nothing? So for only, you froze. Bro. You can ask my girl. That's the only like time. I, that's the only time I've been shook. Yeah. He was like right in front of me, and I was like, oh. and it was it was over. I was like, man, I could have got man. I just want to say hi to him. That's you, top you, three you all would, time to me. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, Andre would be dope, man. Who, in in your opinion, like I feel like eclectically, bro, your music, like you know, even like if you go all the way back to the kids these days, days, you know, what I'm saying like you have kind of been ahead of the curve sonically. Um, who who would you kind of you know, consider your 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 number one influence musically. Like as a kid, was it Outkast? Because I feel like I hear, I definitely hear a lot of like that influence with Andre, Sorry, obviously noise, singing and rapping. Um, Pharrell, I can see that. Yeah, if it's gonna be one person, probably Pharrell or like Nas. Nas, of course. Were you disappointed by the Nas album? No. I thought it was good, but just wasn't great. I thought it was solid. Like, there's some fire on I there. I thought it was going to be incredible. It wasn't incredible. To me, it was like four out of the seven songs I fucked with. Yeah, I, I, I actually, like, I, I, I haven't sat with any of them, like, in a real comprehensive way. Um, so I can't really pass judgment. I just, you know, I like to hear music from Nas. I like to hear music from Ye. I like to hear music from Kid Cudi. You know what I'm saying? Ten the, years the since Tiana a kid Taylor named Cudi dropped, too. It's crazy, so it's like... I just like to hear music from all those people, so I'm not even really one of those people to be like, you know, on on the radio being like I'm disappointed in right, this right, thing's right, right. album. Yeah, I mean, like I fuck with those artists. You feel me? I just so I, I want to hear what they have to say. So you have a couple of um, smaller scale projects dropping before the sophomore album. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's the timeline on these? On these, man. Very soon. Very soon. Well, I mean, we're going to start releasing some records from them, like, in the next week or so. Who are you working with? Like, who do you got some collaborations with, man? Uh, right now, I'm really just collaborating with my guys from Chicago, uh, Poppy Beats. I like that. Done a lot of my shit. Stefan Ponce, 
He put, he produced. Is Tokyo still p- uh, part of the crew? Yeah, yeah. Shout out Tokyo. Yeah, shout out to Tokyo. Um, yeah, I just been working with the guys, man. You know what I'm saying? I never really been too much of a. You've like never been a, a big feature guy. Like a feature yeah. guy, collaboration artist in that way. Just, I don't know. I don't really fuck with niggas like that. I'm very like, uh, kind of like reclusive, and I'm just a, a loner, you know. So I don't really, I don't really do that. I just like to stay in my lane, do my thing. Now I've known you for so long. <laughs> and a lot of times when I meet people, because you're one of my favorite artists. I appreciate you know? that, brother. Um, and every time like I bring you up, like a lot of people who are in the industry, mostly other DJs, think you're an asshole. <laughs> yes. They think you well, get, they think the same uh, thing about they, you too. They just Kev. don't I mean, yeah, I'm a fucking dickhead. But no, nah, but but I always I always hear that like as a constant where I'm like, nah, y'all just don't know him. Or man, every time he around he got fucked up energy when I watch his interviews, he comes off like a dickhead. Do you feel like do you hear that? Or is that just something I'm hearing? Oh, I hear that shit one hundred percent. People do think people do think I'm an asshole, think I'm mean, which is like uh you know, it is what it is, because I'm I'm actually like a a really kind, loyal person, right? And an honest person, and the honesty 100% would make people think you're Hell an asshole. Yeah. But I also, um, you know, I, I just, uh, I'm I'm not that that much of a people person. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't I don't ever mean to be an asshole to people. I really try to be. That's how respectful. I am. That's how I am. I try like, to be respectful yeah. and courteous to everybody. But you know. If I'm if I'm in a room full of people I don't know and I'm just motherfucking standing in the corner you, yep. with my arms crossed or I'm smoking a cigarette and I'm not really like you know going out of my way to speak to people people speak to me I try to keep it nice you know what I mean keep it cordial but I'm really not all that interested most of the time <laughs> yeah we had I'm an asshole it's just right like, just Yo, hey, we just had like I one, got crazy anxiety bro one you know of what our I'm coworkers like just came up to public. me <laughs> yeah one of our coworkers just came up to me. you know you never say hi to anybody and I'm like yo. <laughs> I don't fuck like I don't like how, like what's what interesting. This was fucking crazy about what he just asked you. I'm the asshole, quote unquote, of of the of the of the group, but he the one that has the characteristic traits that usually displays what people would consider an asshole. Right. I'm just very boisterous about my shit. Yeah. Well, West Coast. Uh, um, new music coming soon. Uh, the record with G Easy's dope. It's called Reverse. Um, let's introduce it. Let's introduce the new record, man. Shout out to the boy Young Gerald. He looked like right. You see his new oh, hair. Oh, bro, you see him at the ESPYS. Jeez, yeah, he looking like he and, <laughs> he and Green Day, circa 2020, he 2001. Had on, uh, he up on me with that swag yesterday. I was like, I'm fucking I with this you, swag, my man. Yeah, 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 yo, man, you you gotta be a real player to pull that shit off. He had on the Harry Potter, uh, <laughs> the the Harry Potter joint. Oh no, but yo, let's get into the it's record, man. Swag. Vic, introduce it, brother. Yo, what up? It's your boy Vic Mensa. Introducing my new record, Reverse, featuring my brother G Easy. Come on, man, it's Real 92.3. New Dang. music. 